Hello and welcome to Design Chat, the best live design discussion on the internet. I'm your host, Brian McGovern. On Twitter, I'm at Hoopajube and at Design Chat. Every week we get together, we bring together some of the coolest people from the design community uh, so you can have a chat experience. You can get on camera and you can actually talk to them. It's like a little mini design conference every single week and it's totally free. Tell your friends, tell everybody. Uh, it's also a podcast. Go to iTunes, look for Design Chat, and you can get a new episode every time we upload one. So uh, this week we are talking to, uh, you know, I'm probably going to, I meant to ask you this before the show, John. Pobo, yeah. John Pobajewski, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yep, okay, Pobajewski, good. but it's close enough. Pobajewski and Bud Rodecker, who both happen to work at Thirst. Golf clap. Woo! Yeah, I'm stuck! <laughs> What's going on, guys? Not much. Not much. How you doing? Uh, we, uh, John and I were just chatting up before the show, and it turns out we live like five minutes from each other. So I think it's kind of funny that like the last handful of shows, uh, a, a, a large number of the shows, I've been talking to Chicago people, which is really ridiculous because this platform is, means that we can talk to people anywhere in the entire world. So well, I think it's just sort of natural. Our network is local kind of Chicago people. So cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. absolutely. Here. We are. There we yeah, go. Cheers. Thank <laughs> And yes, we are airline pilots. <laughs> Steve, Quinn. Steve Quinn from was NIU, what's yes. going on? He was my professor in college. Hi, Steve. I'm going to have mine with you also. In a of weeks. <laughs> we are we are from uh, the same school, John, uh, Northern Illinois University. Yes. Uh, right. Visual communications, uh, and we should mention. Let's plug them for a second. They're doing the Seek conference. We just did a, yeah. a blog post about them. Um, that's actually in a week from Saturday, or is it this Saturday? I think it's the twentieth. Steve. <laughs> Waiting. Twentieth. So Steve ten Quinn. days from today. Steve Quinn, uh, they put on a great show. They're putting, check it out, seekconference.com. Um, definitely worthwhile experience. If you're in Chicago, make the trek out to DeKalb to do that. So let's get uh, kicked off here, guys. Um, for people who may not be with either of you, give a brief description of who you are, what you do, and why you do it. I'll go first. Uh, my name is John Pobajewski, a senior designer here at Thirst. Um, I've been working here for about seven years now with Rick and Bud. Bud for a little le less longer than that. Four years. Four years. And um, I do a lot of the uh, interactive work and a lot of the uh, programmed work, programmed artwork here in the office, uh, generative art. It's usually how I ca uh, call it. And so um, any, any of the things that use code to kind of make artwork I do a lot of that here in the office, and also run a lot of client work. Um, and as a partner, founding partner of Moving Design, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that's it. I'm from Michigan, and I'm from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I uh, went to school in Duluth, Minnesota. Came down here right out of school, uh, like John said. I am in my fourth year at Thirst, and um, I am really a ge generalist. In design, I think mm -hmm. I do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, photo minor, so I tend to take the work, some of the photography in the office, and um, you know, video, print, web, whatever it takes. Cool. And uh, we've had on with Valis Senti on the show before, uh, owner of Thirst. Uh, they are at 3st.com. Um, definitely check them out if you haven't already and watch that show. It was amazing. It was hilarious. It was good times. <laughs> thank, say thank you to Riff for doing that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So a little bit about a format. If you haven't seen the show before, uh, you can ask questions. There's a little red button on the right side of the chat that says something like submit a question and it can either you can either type in a text question or if you've got a webcam, you can get on video and actually sort of face-to-face -face these guys a question, anything you want. So... Uh, we will get to that in a little bit. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of chatting. And then at the end, we're doing a new segment where we turn the, t turn the tables on you guys. And Bud and John are going to ask a question of you guys. And they told me those questions. And get ready. Get your brains ready. <laughs> Put on your thinking caps because they're going to rock your world. Um, one question involving Jamie Lee Curtius. Cur Curtius? Curtis. Uh, she's, I'm sure she's a very nice person. But uh, we'll get to that. Um, 
So, all right, but uh, couldn't be more jealous that right out of school, your first job, an internship, is with Thirst, and then you just started taking that, you know, they, they hired you on full time, and that was like, that was it, and you're there, and you've been there for four years. Do you regret not having any jobs before you got to go? <laughs> well, actually, a little bit. You know, people, we have student tours come through, and they ask about interviewing and, and like, what should be in their portfolio, and I'm like, I really can't tell you, because I don't know, but, because <laughs> I never did that. Um, Someone's going to know what beer we're Oh, doing. okay. Um, but I actually did an internship between junior and senior year, and that was probably the best thing I did. Uh, mm -hmm. It was at a small yeah. packaging firm and um, in Minneapolis called Mighty Fine Design. Uh, really great people, and they taught me a lot. So uh, I don't know. I think uh, I had a little bit of an experience there. But you know, uh, I, I remember when I started to find out about the Minneapolis scene. I was kind of surprised back then because it went. I didn't really wasn't aware that the artistic and creative and design scene in Minneapolis is deep. You know, there's a lot of amazing firms, a lot of people doing amazing work out of that city, and mm -hmm. I don't think it gets enough recognition for it. No, there's definitely like a, a kind of a house style in Minneapolis, yeah. and I would kind of link it to um, <laughs> a little bit of CSA, Charles Spencer Anderson, mm -hmm. but there are definitely firms that that break out of that a little bit. But it's crazy. It's like Every corner, there's a design firm uh, when you go down a Main Street in Minneapolis. So um, there's definitely plenty of work there. But it's cold. Uh, <laughs> John, yes, it is. you yes. have um, you've done some lecturing at both NIU and U of I. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us what that experience has been like for you uh, at those stages in your career. And what, what do you lecture about? What do you talk about to students? Uh, a lot of the times my conversations with students are about lessons learned from just being out of school. Um, I'm, I'm 30, so I'm not that far out of school. And um, the, the, so the lectures usually tend to just be about lessons learned and, and things that clients have taught me and also just things that um, I've learned from being <clears throat> in the workplace. Because that's such a huge leap. You know, every, every, every new intern who comes in to work at Thirst always kind of goes through those growing pains. You know, after coming out of school and graduating, they have, have the, the ramp of getting up to speed. Uh, and uh, so I try to um, share some of the things that I learned, um, some of the, the little tidbits of advice. The cliff. Yes, the cliff, we all call it, because everybody kind of comes in here and then their eyes get super wide on the first day, you know, as we sort of like strap them into the roller coaster ride that is, <laughs> that is thirst. So. Why is thirst a roller coaster ride? Uh, well, uh, Rick has a phrase. Uh, he says that he likes to throw fastballs at your head. Um, so he likes to uh, ask uh, and put you, keep you on your toes and uh, kind of put you on the spot, uh, both creatively and sometimes just, I don't know, just normally. <laughs> it is a way of turning things on their head. Yes, exactly. So, um, and so that's kind of the way our whole office practice is like. That's the way our whole creative process is like. We're very... Um, we're very, it's very quick and fast and um, reactionary and sort of, you know, it, it, we, we, we learn a lot by doing. So it, as a result of that, um, sometimes people can get a little overwhelmed when they first start out because, you know, that's just kind of the opposite experience of being in college. In college, it's very, com you know, uh, you, you get a lot of time to uh, contemplate every assignment you get. So, yeah. um, and in Thirst, you kind of just have to start it. And you aren't working with a director. Yeah over your shoulder, literally. Right. Well, sometimes, yeah, yeah. sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes figuratively and sometimes literally, yeah. Is Rick Valicenti the Dr. House of Design? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, he's, uh, Rick is super gentle. Uh, he's, he's very, um, he's the most generous person I've ever met in my life. He, he, he uh, is very generous with his time yeah. and uh, with his, you know, with his advice and with opportunities. He's given me Gosh, so many opportunities over my career, uh, and I know you over your, your career too. Um, and so uh, he's definitely not Doctor House, <laughs> but uh, but he's in, he can be, but it, it can be intense. You and know, he can, he can fix things though. Yes, really well. He can. He also doesn't walk with a cane. No, no. cane. Yeah. 
No. He doesn't walk with a cane. No, um, no. <laughs> and speaking of these, those opportunities, I definitely want to get into the subject of moving design, um, mm -hmm. how that got started, and, and what it means to you guys. Uh, well, moving design was started by Rick and I, and um, it was basically an idea of how to use design in a different way, so uh, a way outside of um, uh, the, the client work and outside of some of the experimental work that we had been doing up until that point. Um, uh -huh. So uh, the, the main philosophy of moving design is to create projects that change the public point of view. And uh, the most recent uh, aspect of that, the, kind of the most recent success that we had with that was with the summer workshop on water that Bud was a big part of. I'll let you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that, actually. Yeah, so um, the website says moving design is at the intersection of education, design, and experimentation, right. which is a good uh, explanation of what we, moving design is all about. So moving design put on this workshop we called Call to Action, and it was in the month of July, and it was all about water issues in Chicago. <clears throat> um, so the idea was to bring a bunch of uh, working professionals together, give them a, uh, a subject um, that they can learn about and work on, and then see what they come up with, see if they can educate the public or change the point of view somehow. So. Uh, Throughout July, we brought in, uh, we had speakers come in, we had Bruce Mao come by and present to us. Mm -hmm. We learned about the water system, and we just made things to see if we could, you know, raise some awareness. So we made a website, we made a video, we had a parade, we made a bunch of posters. Uh, mm -hmm. Nick Adam was in it, he did some water murals by like cleaning away the dirt on the side of underpasses to, oh, to cool. make typography. Mm -hmm. um, you want me to type in the, I'll yeah. type in the website for yeah. that right now. So it was a great experience, and we're looking to see how we can expand that and do that again in the future. Um, yeah, it's our water.org. And then mm -hmm. if you click on the bottom, follow our progress, it brings you to the blog where we documented the process. So that, that project's a really great example of kind of what we want to do with moving design going forward, where we do these, we get designers together to do uh, these uh, to kind, of, to kind of bring a, uh, to communicate the need for focus on these uh, important issues. And the fascinating thing about this water project is that it actually has gotten a lot of attention um, by people in policy, uh, people who do planning and people who are actually interested in water. We have made a lot of really interesting relationships, mm -hmm. like uh, Josh Ellis yeah, with the, the Metro Metropolitan Planning Council. Yep, and um, some other other folks as well that have really. Uh, uh, just shown us much more that this can really make a difference. And so we're, we're really excited about it. Yeah. And we should mention right now that Moving Design is doing another workshop with uh, students at the University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign. They're doing one with Rockport Publishing on um, the future of reading. So um, you can see, check that one out at, uh, well, well, we'll type the link down for you, but it's called Tabula Rasa. Rick's running that right now. <laughs> Um, kind of 24/7 it seems. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's teaching kind of a, an online class format, and um, they're doing some really interesting things. So both uh, it's it's our water and um, Tabula Rasa are going to be made into books that we're going to then uh, self-publish on Blurb, which we'll announce. Gosh, let's say 2011, early right 2011. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was right. Or now. live on the web right now. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, you, I mean, you announced, but they're not published, so that kind of counts. Right, uh, exactly. And what, a, what a really interesting uh, topic, and it'd be very important for everyone who is in professional design, the idea of the future of reading, mm -hmm. and where that goes, reading what, and how they get it, uh, how it's delivered to them, and how the creators of those words uh, get the words, you know, get their publishing documents or tools through whatever source, of, whether that's print or web or I, uh, you know, ebook, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Uh, wow, that, that's got the wheels turning already. It's going to be a very exciting event. Yeah, you should check out the link and just see what the students are coming up with so far. It's really fascinating. And um, they're, they're just coming up with some really interesting. It's a great class there. It's multidisciplinary. So there's yeah. um, some industrial designers. There's some, I think there's a few interior designers, and there's obviously a lot of designers in the class too. And uh, that dynamic has been very interesting and made for some really interesting work. So, The future of design seems to be a topic that's constantly over-discussed 
uh, mm -hmm. during during many whatever forums or whatever you know conferences, and especially for for younger designers uh, coming out of school, because there seems to be a lot of unknowns, and I think it kind of taps into something, John, that you mentioned, interdisciplinary design. Uh, it seems like we're wearing a lot of hats right now, and, and I'm sure you experience that uh, on a first-hand basis every day. Um, so just give me your brief thoughts on, uh, on, on sort of the importance of, uh, of, I don't know, just you know, keeping on your feet right now and, and where the design profession uh, is, is sort of moving towards right now. Sure, absolutely. Well, I know um, one of the things we always look for for people to, that come in and join, join us here in the studio is to have an interest in something outside of design. Um, mine is, is music and, uh, gen and sort of art, you know, creating things with code. Um, and uh, Bud's is photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we have a, an intern in here right now, Colin. Uh, he's doing a lot of thing with sensories, and sensory and sensory data. So uh, finding different interfaces for interacting with design. His entire portfolio is driven by QR codes. Um, and then uh, oh, really? there's uh, yeah, and then also our, our uh, youngest member of Thirst, uh, Tina Von Loon, is also um, really interested in. Uh, <clears throat> new media um, and, and uh, kind of brings a lot of uh, thinking, uh, uh, sociological thing actually from from that from that end of things. And of course, Rick is not actually a trained designer. I don't know if people know that. Rick's a photographer by trade, has his master's degree in uh, in ph photography, and learned on uh, the job. Yeah. Mass uh, photographer by degree, yeah. and a graphic designer <laughs> yeah. by trade. Yeah, so. actually, well, yeah, but you should see him. Yeah, both Bud and I have experienced Rick on a photo shoot. It's really something to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's pretty. It's a pretty awesome experience. But uh, no, yeah, he's sort of, um, despite you know being a medalist, he doesn't have a professional degree. So that kind of um, that kind of interest is something that uh, we all bring to the table. And so I think that really speaks to your original point, which was you know about inter interdisciplinary. Design. I think that it is harder and harder for people to be real, really specialized. And uh, you know, you don't have to do everything, but I think you got to do something besides one thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, especially in this office. Well, yeah. Well, really, I think it's going to be every office. If you're going to find yourself to be relevant or uh, sort of a, a move maker, you know, to to get noticed anywhere. Um, you've got to be able to have a great number of talents, and it's all over the board from design thinking and creative thinking to very analytical and digital thinking in, in programming and code. Um, mm -hmm. what, uh, but one of the things you spoke about recently, um, I'm forgetting what talk you gave, uh, but it was what I didn't learn in college. Uh, give yeah. us a little, yeah. you know, a few highlights from that um, and, and what young people should be focusing on right now. What I didn't learn in college uh, was that, well, I didn't learn that I actually wasn't a designer when I graduated. I thought I was. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't until I, you know, two years on the job where I thought, okay, now I'm a graphic designer. And then now I'm like, yeah, now I'm a graphic designer. Right. <laughs> but uh, um, I didn't really learn typography. I didn't learn details uh, that well. I didn't learn... Um, really how to how to work with clients and especially how to work with an art director because working with an art director is so different than working with a teacher and making up a project for yourself. That's uh, true. Yeah, and working collaboratively where uh, we often design like we're sitting right now. We'll sit right next to each other and work on one thing. One person kind of drives the ship and the other person watches out for icebergs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's that a really good way of putting it, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah congrats on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I forget that presentation, but I that presentation I had specific projects I had made in my first year, and what what I had learned that I didn't learn in, in school related to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the business side of it Earlier, is really important too. Go ahead. Uh, the, the being able to be exposed to that at, at a at a college level, and that's something that like kind of no student knows, like that. You know, you are keeping track of your time, so right. it does matter how long you spend on something. Right. And so, and that's something that is kind of foreign. You know. Right. And that, in that first, in that, and then in that first, like round of design process, 
you're designing for that next presentation of, to the client. Right. Not absolutely. like designing for the final product. It's mm -hmm. like I would make these files and then Rick would come and start changing things because he's like, no, 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 I need to present it this way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that was something I was going to bring up because that's definitely something we talked about in our conversation with Rick uh, because he's got to have a unique perspective on the relationship between design and this, having A, done it for so long, and B, at one point completely uh, disbanded the group he was working with and started f from scratch because he wasn't happy with the way it was going. What are or what is the sort of business acumen uh, that you have picked up from Rick uh, in, in your time with him? Oh, well, Rick is like this kind of crazy entrepreneur, and uh, whenever there's an opportunity, there's a business, there's like a way to make a business out of it. I don't know if you, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, this. Absolutely. It's like, it's a true this is a crazy idea. Okay, we can do that, and we can make money, we can do, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But it's never really about necessarily the idea of making money is coming up. It's just like more of ways of, of making uh, us able to do the work that we want to do. Yeah. The right. one thing he's always taught me is that, you know, uh, it's it's more the idea of responsibility than anything else that um, you know you have to understand the process of um, of business and the fact that you know to be a to be a creative person isn't always about you know just wearing wearing pink pants and crazy glasses and showing up to work and you know you know cr creating magic or something it's, it it is very much about you know, being focused in on uh, being responsible for what you're doing and knowing that if you spend time on something, that time is worth something to someone. It's either going to be worth something to a client or your principal is going to pay for it. So you better know that, uh, you know, what you're doing uh, or, and be responsible for it. Um, it's, not, it's not taught to be intended to be fearful, like to be like an ax hanging over every young designer. You know, like if you better get that, that done fast or we're going to cut your head off. You know, it, it's more like uh, it's more about um, just the reality of knowing that you know it is important to be aware of where you are in a process because otherwise it's just going to end up being uh, a difficult process for everybody. And um, at sure. the end of the day, the one thing you don't want is contempt, be it for you for a project or for a different pro or from your client for you or for vice, you know anybody in the in the process. I want to comment on what's happening in the comments here. Mitch Smith is saying design sure, should be done before touching the software, mm -hmm. and that uh, something about the computer being a, like a microwave. Yeah. Uh, we do this. We there's this principle we use when we're designing in the offices, but thinking by doing. Yeah. And it's the only way we've been able to to actually make it work. And the the computer and Illustrator and Photoshop are really just like it's a pencil. It's another Absolutely. tool mm -hmm. for making a computer. If you can draw your design pencil or if you can use Photoshop to do your design we work in InDesign a lot but we work in InDesign like right away and we think about the project by doing the project rather than you know sitting around talking about it forever we just jump right in and like sit and talk right. while making it happen yeah so I don't think design should be done before getting to the computer yeah I, I do a lot of um, Rick and I kind of communicate by thumbnail which is, if anyone else actually saw the thumbnails, it would be like, you know, looking at what your doctor writes down on a prescription. They just look like, you know, Rick is, a ri Rick is really good, and then there's me. <laughs> uh, mine chicken scratch. Rick can draw upside down in yeah, the meeting, he, and it he's, looks like yeah, the final result. Rick is, is crazy. Rick is crazy. But, um, but that, that has actually been something that's become really important for me, is that, um, you know, chicken scratch on a page just helps you kind of, like, get your, you know, get your idea down in a really, really rough form. And then that you can you know take to the computer, but I'm I'm definitely you know the, the whole office thinks the same way. But just describe where you know we're actually sort of on the computer first, pretty pretty quickly on the process, making it happen. It's levels of refinement, right? It's it's getting getting the initial idea out of your head verbally, and then visually, and then on the computer, and then final art, and and that sort of thing. Is there a, yeah. a sort of does is there like a sort of set of unwritten rules or written rules about how a uh, project workflow happens from a uh, client comes to you, client asks for A, uh, you guys deliver B. Is there, is there like a progress or, you know, is there uh, a document that says this is how this process happens? Um, I, would, I would say two things on that. Like every process is a, 
the both both the exactly the same and totally different. <laughs> and that, you know, you can kind of predict like, okay, we're going to show some comps. They're going to come back with some revisions. Then we're going to come, you know, make those revisions and then try and conceal compromise and then, you know, and go, go further around. But at the same token, because you're working with different people every time, the process is often completely different. You're trying to figure out exactly what makes this person tick and what uh, they're going to be receptive to and then what the problem is and, you know, trying to help them address yeah. it. There's a general framework, but then gets built around the how the client exactly. works. Exactly. One of the things we've been teaching um, some of our uh, younger designers in the office right now is how to um, be able to uh, think through visual concepts very, very quickly yeah. um, in the very beginning of a process. And this is something we're noticing that, or I've noticed in my career, has actually been something that young designers don't, don't do particularly well right out of school. They usually need to take a little bit more time to get into the habit of it, and that's just being able to develop a really wide like swath of ideas really, really quickly. They don't have to be perfect. In fact, they probably shouldn't be perfect. No. Um, there, and it's more about just trying to illustrate really totally different I visual ideas very quickly. Um, and uh, that's that's one of the things that uh, we found that um, you know it's really usually takes some time for young designers to kind of get. Yeah, it takes practice to get yeah. fast and to get to the point where you can make a sketch digitally if we're working on the computer mm -hmm. and uh, not right. refine it and move on to the next variation. I had that problem when I first came out of school. Yeah. I would move down one track and get it perfect. And everybody, move. I think everybody yeah. has that problem. You know, everyone sort of like, you know, gets stuck in a rut and then just kind of goes down into that rut and then it just keeps going and going and going and going. And, you know. Yeah, so our first InDesign files are usually like pages and pages and pages. <laughs> yeah. Like, dupe that one. Okay, do this. Dupe that one. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. All right, save that mistake. Dupe it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Earlier today, uh, Mig Reyes tweeted, uh, <laughs> "Ladies and gals, or g ladies, ladies and gents, design heartthrob Bud Rodecker will be on Design Chat tonight." Yeah, Get and ready. then it said, and then it I'm said, just curious. With, "With John, <laughs> <laughs> how long, Bud, have you held this title? Um, I didn't. And how amazing does it feel?" <laughs> It's kind of awkward, but it, I think it came from a tweet from... Um, I'm uh, trying to find it. You're trying no, to find it. It's going to be from a long time ago. Uh, yeah. From a tweet a long time ago. And oh, from Allison Yard Medland. She oh, okay. tweeted that a while ago. And uh, if Mig was referencing that, um, that's where it came from. Yeah. I didn't know I was... And he has a great from. memory. I'm just... <laughs> well, it's official now because it's captured on video. And it's going yeah. to be published. Yeah. And if, yeah. if you're if you're watching this video now, sometime in the future, you should tweet at Bud Rodecker. Uh, <laughs> you you are my favorite design heartthrob. That's right. See if we can. Yeah, we should trend it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Hashtag. Yes. Hashtag design, design heartthrob. Yep. Hey mom, how's it going? <laughs> Love it. See my face red. <laughs> Bud's mom is watching this evening for all of you in the chat room. Say hi to Bud's yeah. mom and be nice. And That's right. hey, hey brother, hey sister. My brother is in Atlanta, my sister's in Colorado, and my mom's in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. See, we're nationwide here at Design Chat. Everybody's That's right. watching. Absolutely. Hey Jimmy. Um <laughs> So, okay, so we're getting to the half hour mark. We're going to start taking questions uh, from the audience. Let me just remind you, if you're just showing up, you click on the little red button that says submit a question, uh, and you can either enter a text question or hop on a webcam and actually face-to-face -face ask your questions. So please, please do so. If this show, the reason why we do, do this, guys, is reaching out to the design community so you guys have a forum to speak to. It's not just about interviewing rock stars like these guys. Um, it's about everybody <laughs> because... You know, the, the more I do this, the more I realize everybody who I reach out to who is a design rock star, you know what, they're people too, and they've got ideas and they want to share just as much as you do. So please, please, ask, ask a question, get involved. Uh, uh, so first question tonight we'll take from Query Key, great name, by the way. Hey, Colin. Uh, should, Hi, Colin. Should all, we know this person? He's the inter current intern at Thirst. What a good guy. Jump it yeah. in. I love it. Should all graphic design students learn web? Well, it's funny he brings this up because we just talked about this about two hours ago. Um, 
So the question is, should all designs, graphic design students learn web? And uh, I'm going to start with, I, I think you should start. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah, well, okay. I, I was, at, at dinner, at I dinner. said, yes, I think that everybody should know a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion, well, especially just, I only know our experience here, but mm -hmm. coming to a small studio environment, it's been so helpful that I know a little bit of everything and that I'm, I know enough to be able to go and Google and learn more of how to do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to get into a small environment, I would say yes, because uh, you're going to need it. And just from the nature of the work that we're doing, we're doing more and more web work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your turn. OK. Well, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I actually, at, at dinner, I disagreed. Uh, that not everybody should, and, and my point was that not everybody should be a web designer. Um, there's some mixed uh, feelings out there, but uh, I'm pretty uh, adamant in my opinion that uh, to be a good web designer, you have to know programming. Mm -hmm. And programming is the kind of thing that you either like it or you don't. Uh, and if you don't, if you don't like it, um, it, it, it can be a, a world of pain for you because uh, it is a whole other discipline and a whole other uh, level of focus. And I think you need to know at least uh, markup, uh, CSS, and uh, you know JavaScript, obviously, to be able to get started. Because if you don't really truly understand those things, you won't actually know what the web is supposed to do, be able to follow the standards that people have set, uh, or that have sort of been set by the, you know, have been, kind of come out of the internet, and uh, understand how they work. And it's just, it's very, very important. And thank you, and, Colin, and, and for thought, asking that question. Thank you, Colin. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yes. <laughs> Coming to work early. Uh, Patrick McGovern wants to know, given the fast pace of the thirst environment, what does the company do to help alleviate stress? <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. It's, no, that's not true. It's a pretty relaxed environment here. You yeah. know, we have... We've got music playing in the office. Um, we're all just situated a little circle here. Um, it's it's pretty low key, except that you know there is. Can you a lot turn of the camera and give us a tour? Oh, should we try um, to do that? Yeah, let okay. me see here. I got a big. Without unplugging. Here. Yeah, we're gonna do the best we can here. All right. Hello, internet. <laughs> I'm turning. Hello, internet. Meet thirst. Meet the office. Have a tour. This is, this is Colin's computer. Yeah, okay, there you can. Yeah, there, there we go. go. There we go. Yeah, you're kind of getting some of the art wall there. Oh, there's my I, It's a beautiful post. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you knocked over, I'm sure it wasn't expensive. No, no, no. And there's secret okay. documents that if you have high definition uh, video, you might be able to read. Yeah. And then we'll go the other way. Okay. So this is the curtain that separates the kind of archive room. John. This is our conference room. Yep. More art on the wall. Watch that plug. And Nick Adams typographic uh, installation that sadly is coming. It's falling off, but we're nice. gonna fix that. Yep. Yep. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Hello. Welcome back. Yep. Thank you for the tour. So to really answer the question, I mean, like Bud said, it's not really that uh, stressful. I think you just have to have the right personality for it if you like. Fast. If you like fast pace, right? You kind of you're already relaxed by that. So. And we're all here to help each other out. You Absolutely. know, like Tina. Tina today had a pretty rough day, mm -hmm. and uh, even though John and I were both, you know, doing our own thing, we we're there to make sure that she was able to get her stuff done. Yep. Yeah. So we help each other out. It is a fast paced environment. Um, you know, whether it's it's the thirst office or anyone who's working in a professional capacity. Oh yeah, uh, at, in, in design. Um, especially now that we have so many distractions. I should mention that today um, we are broadcasting, I'm broadcasting using a brand new browser called Rock Melt. I got an invite, I downloaded it, I've been using it all day, and it is the biggest distraction I've ever had in my entire life. All day I've been constantly bombarded with all of my Facebook messages, my friends' statuses updates, my Twitter feed. On the right side I'm looking at my Twitter feed, Facebook feed, Facebook feed, Twitter feed, 99 tweets, 99 Facebook, and I, I guess it only goes to 99. My Gmail is right there. <laughs> um, I've still got a phone on my desk where people are calling me to get answers on projects that are going on. 
this is all on my laptop. Then I've got my desktop computer that has all of my actual design work going on it, my email from work. It was a nightmare. My head was absolutely racing. So given that rant, what are the things that you guys do in your digital life to sort of focus? Do you have all these things all the time? Or are there times where you shut all your social media feeds and just look at your design? Oh, oh well, I'm terrible at this. I, I'm like, <laughs> some days I'm so distracted. It'll be like, all right, I set that title. Better check Twitter. Okay, now I check her. All right, now I'm going to place another page. Oh, I better see what's happening on Facebook. <laughs> and it's like, it gets over the top crazy. So okay. I, uh, I will just, I try to limit it. Like, okay, I'm, I've just looked at that. I'm, I've been working on uh, deliberately focusing on what I've been doing, and it's <laughs> difficult. And I like changed my email setting from not checking email every one minute. It checks every five minutes now. Right. And I only do email <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while. Like I'll, I'll let that number sit there for a while until I'm ready to go through them all. It's uh, yeah. it's crazy. When I write, I have to like fill the whole screen with black and then just have mm -hmm. my piece of paper to write with. Yeah. I, I can't handle it. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually have any John, social. You? Yeah, I don't have any social media or anything uh, running during the day. I'm too, I'm on the phone too much. I'm on the email. I, you know, I run, e I do email back and forth too much. And um, design time is so precious in the office for me yeah. that um, it's just I can't afford it. So I do mine on the commute. I mega commute from Elgin all the way down to the city and then back every day. So um, that's when I do my uh, my tweeting and my Facebooking. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully not while you're driving. No, on the train. <laughs> Ryan Kindinger wants to know how has having clients with creative benefited the design process at Thirst? Well, I'll take that because Ryan was my intern about uh, three or four years ago, I think. Did you ever met Ryan? No, no he went to. Hey, Ryan. To, a to answer his question, uh, I think that that actually has been a deliberate thing about uh, who we've worked with here at Thirst through the years. I know that when Rick uh, reinvented the business, when he changed it from our Valisani design to Thirst, uh, that was one of the main things he was really looking for, was having um, and seeking out clients who were creative in their own right. Uh, the idea of designing for designers, uh, whether that person is actually a graphic designer or whether that uh, industry is architecture or uh, interior design, interior design, industrial design, even policy making, even cultural, uh, you know, being a cultural leader or, uh, uh, you know, a cultural design uh, leader. All of those things uh, have really influenced everything that we do and even the, and, our, and especially our process and how we work. We work very collaboratively with our clients and uh, very iteratively as a result. Yeah. So I think it's kind of everything in a way. I think it's, Changed everything about thirst. Really defined it. Yeah, they get it at a at a certain level. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you, absolutely. You can go into their first meeting and you don't have to explain mm -hmm. everything. The other side of it is that they're very discerning too. As that you know, you can't you can't pull any fast ones off on our, our clients. They're very very sharp, and so um, you know if you come in there without your A game on, they recognize it almost immediately, and, and will tell you. <laughs> yeah, we have clients that are like, why that lighting looks too tight there. Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> they call you out your typographic. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. What are you doing, man? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, why does why does Bud keep on designing a papyrus? <laughs> what was that? What? Something what? about papyrus. <laughs> why do I keep designing with papyrus? I can't oh, stand oh, yeah, papyrus. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. More more about papyrus it's later. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. I had to bring it up. It was in your bio. I had to bring it up. Yeah. Yep. Um. Dr. Graphics wants to know, I work in news design, what thoughts on clients that think they are designers? I think they're the best clients you could ever have. Period, amen. How about that? That was a quick response. <laughs> yeah. All of our clients kind of think they're designers. I think, all, I think everybody, all clients, all people who are creative in what they do are in fact designers. And, and um, so I think that the, to, to answer that question, I think actually uh, they're great and they're worth seeking out. That's, yeah, that's, that's another great thing about clients who recognize the creative process is that they understand what pushback means because they do it to their clients. 
or right. they do it to the people they work with. So it's not a foreign concept. So when you say, I don't think that's the right decision, they don't take it personally necessarily. You know, they, they understand what you're trying to say, and so they actually take, I think, closer heed than someone who would be like, why aren't you just doing it so I can go home and right. take care right. of my dog? So. Yeah. so let's alter the question so that it asks, what would you do in a scenario where your client is giving you design advice or de design feedback and you absolutely agree with it? Oh, well, that's that actually goes to the Rick metaphor that's called uh, help them see. Mm -hmm. You have to, it's your responsibility as the designer to get the client on the other side of the table to see what you see. Right. So you have to try and find the way to get through to them to get them to see it. And, uh, to see what the issue right. is. So if they say the letting is too tight, maybe the type size is too big. They right. say, you know, or they say the, uh, you know, the type size is too small, maybe it needs to be bold, or maybe the colors need to be changed. It's stuff like that. You know, it's knowing that uh, it's not necessarily taking everything at face value as if you're you know, trying to fulfill an order at McDonald's. It's trying to being able to like, listen to what the feedback is and the concern is. And even if they give you specific instructions, try to figure out what really the issue is. Yeah, and, and guide them right. to the same result that you're getting. You can't always just push them or tell them what to do. You have to guide them to that process. Absolutely. And that's a gentle, gentle process. Yep. Gentle. <laughs> gentle. We've got our first video question of the night that we're going to take here from Ooh. Tyler Record. Let's see if we can get him on and see how he does. Video? What's up, Tyler? Hey, Hello, Tyler. Tyler. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, I'm a vector artist, and I was wondering if you do any pre-illustrations pre before you do any of your final work with Illustrator or Photoshop. Illustrator Photoshop. Bud is reaching for something. I'm just looking for to see if we have any sketches sitting here. Okay. Yeah, well, we sketch all the time. Um, this is a perfect example. Yeah, okay, go for it. Uh, pre illustrations? Okay. <laughs> um, so we will uh, draw little thumbnails, sketch out what we think it's going to look like, mm -hmm. and then make that happen. Yeah. Was that your question or were you actually talking about doing something that looks more like fine art and then importing it into the software and then modifying it? Yeah, that. That the second thing. Um, we have done that before actually. Um, uh, we've, we're, uh, I'm looking at a poster right now on the wall uh, that's uh, from Rick uh, that he did for a lecture in Vancouver where um, it's actually a photo collage of uh, different faces that he's taken and then digitally modified. So yeah, we do that all the time. Cool. Thanks, Tyler, for your question. Uh, more questions here from the audience. Navo Pawa Pereira. I'm butchering your name. I'm very sorry. I'm very, very oh, sorry. Where? How important is the interaction design process for you guys? Wireframe slash prototyping slash user testing. Ah, interesting question. Um, do you want to take it or do you want me to do it? Well, you just had an experience with this. Recently. Yeah, absolutely. We do uh, our own sort of, I think, unique <laughs> thirst form of wireframing uh, where we actually just try to identify um, where the content needs to go and how to really talk about the content. And we mm -hmm. try to do that in uh, design formats that uh, I, I, I call are able to be sacrificed. So they're, they're very quick and they're yeah. very simple and you can spend time kind of illustrating your idea and then you can throw it out and never use it again because it's not actually really time spent doing design. So um, uh, I like to think of that as more of an elaborate sketching process that you kind of get the client involved in. Yep. It's not as formal as a lot of the stuff that uh, you read about on the web and that's just that's just their style. That's just the way we... Yeah, we just... We every, every, everyone is a little unique. Most Absolutely. recently I did a... I was working on with a client and they were talking about using a blog so I made the most basic blog template it was like headline picture body content sidebar it was like all of the WordPress default archive stuff mm -hmm. and like logo and then just to just to have be able to have the conversation right about what a blog should be and that's something that we do a lot and that's design for conversation so we'll design something so we can have a conversation about how big that title should be. 
or where that picture should be placed. Yeah. And in the end, that design doesn't actually get selected because it's not right, but it leads us to the right answer. Absolutely. So I think we spend most of our time in the iteration phase of just trying to do more and more and more and more sketches of where different things go. And if you want to call that wire t framing, I guess you could. Yeah. But it's it's somewhere in between wire framing and the actual concept. So uh, something that I've always loved about Thirst's um, web presence is that it constantly morphs and that it feels almost nothing like any other design firm on the web. Um, what can you tell us about thought process uh, behind that and, and your involvement in the sort of web presence of Thirst? Uh, well, we're just about to change it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, see? See? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, it's 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 getting a minor change. It's getting a kind of interim change before we completely overhaul it next year. But yeah, um, the idea with the, with the web presence as it is right now and how it actually will be, it's just going to be kind of be a slight a slight change. Is that it's all about just trying to create a, a bridge the gap between the back plane of the background and the information in the foreground, and to really try to create something where those two spaces become interesting. Because usually on the web, you have your information in a box, and then the background is just kind of behind it. Uh, and uh, yeah. certainly, that's I'm t terribly oversimplifying the web, but that that we're trying to try to react against that and try to create something that's a little bit more, has more depth in it. And yeah, create a, a presentation that's going to show the work in a way that's reflective of the work in a way. Absolutely. There's has some interesting work. Let's show it in a respectful very but meta, interesting very way. Meta. Yeah, this that, yeah, it's super deep, but very uh, well, I am deep. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but is very deep. Uh, there's another question here, and I'm saying uh, this person might be in relation to Bud, uh, unless there's another Rodecker out there from P Rodecker. Wants to know in the book Design Basics Design is divine, defined as essentially the opposite of GAN. Do you agree? Oh man. Hey Paul, that's my brother. Speaking by the way. speaking of deep. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I don't feel know that one. because we we allow chance to happen. We try to allow chance to happen or design. Yeah. And so much in the process, what we're trying mm -hmm. to uh, we're trying to reach a goal. And then along the way, all of a sudden, we make a mistake, and it goes that way. Mm -hmm. And and you know, working like this, Rick sitting next to me goes, "Save that!" And then, yeah. and then that ends up being in the design, mm -hmm. and it was totally unintentional. However, the decision to go with it, yeah, is yeah, well, extremely intentional. Right, but I think you need, yeah. So, so in the in the end, you're you're deciding right, yeah, what's yeah. going to be there. But yeah, I think you have to let chance and accidents. Uh, crack through that process. Be open to things that, that come, you know, be open to things as they come along, come to you along the journey. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. That was good. Yeah. Very great question. And, and you know, uh, when, when we had the chance to talk to Milton Glaser, one of the things that he talked about, because, of course, when you're talking to Milton Glaser, you're going to talk a lot about the evolution of design and how much change he's mm -hmm. seen and what stayed constant throughout that whole time. And he says one of the things right. that he enjoys the most uh, is the ability to be able to connect the dots, right? And, and it's not really that you're creating magic and just everything builds up and it's, you know, it's perfect every time. It's as you're experimenting and talking about different things, you can relate idea A to idea Q where most other people are. Mm -hmm. Right, all right. Right. That's, yeah. That's a, that's a really, well, uh, really great way of putting it. Thank you. Uh, Colin is back with another question. Let's take his question. Query key. How do you deal with clients who are tech literate? Jeez, Colin's putting us on the spot. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you walk them through the process. That's, yeah. that's our job. We're, we're yep. consultants. Absol so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Don't pretend that uh, everybody knows as much as you. Yeah. You know, everybody knows things as intimately as you do. They know other things, right? Yeah. They they're knowledgeable in other areas that perhaps that you are not. Totally. So it's just a matter of just making it uh, resonate with them and don't try and just bulldoze them over with jargon because at the end of the day you're both gonna be unhappy. No, you never wanna come top down on a client. You never you yeah. never wanna be like, This is the way it is. Right. You wanna, you know, lift them up to the same level you are, and then that way you can collaborate on their project. 
We've got another question here. Uh, thank you for that last one, Colin. Um, from Faust Limited, I'm curious if this is Bob Faust himself. It's awesome if it is. If it's not, nice to meet you, Faust Limited. What's up, uh, what's up Bob or Ben? Hey, ben. How, how has the city of Chicago helped uh, define each of you as designers? You live here, so you should you should, uh, you should start with the that city one. of Chicago. Well, um, I uh, I left Minnesota, which kind of I always felt a, a lot of the work in Minnesota has a, a kind of a, a kitsch look, and I came to Chicago, um, which has uh, a history of modernism, and I became like in love with modernism in school, and. Uh, um, so I think looking at uh, living in Chicago and the architecture of Chicago and, and, and um, working with Rick and working with John, who in the focus of, at Thirst is to make uh, new work that feels fresh and mm -hmm. new, um, I think it's totally influenced my design that into, I don't know, a really good, good direction. I forget, I don't know how to say that in a different way. I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. the one thing that I, I I would agree with you wholeheartedly on is that the, the Chicago has a lineage of design, an yeah. incredible history of it, especially architecturally, and uh, that teaches you respect I think, and it also actually gives you respect in in return because uh, Chicago has a lot of respect for design. I mean the mayor uh, himself is I mean how many places can say that their mayor um, fought for you know something like Millennium Park, which is the you know the biggest design gem, perhaps of the last you know 50 or 70, you know, 75 years, arguably. So uh, you know to know that um, you're in a city where design is valued at the highest level, I think gives you respect and also humbles you at the same time because you're 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 aware of your place in history and your your place in design history, and you need to know that uh, uh, you know it's important that you respect it. Right, and you wanna you wanna make work that holds up. And you know, in the in the city, you know, let's audio is back. Hello. Hey, <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, in the city of Chicago, do it that respects work itself so much. You know, the idea of you're not gonna get anything for free. So, uh, Chicago is a city that works. And people respect that. Uh, you know, if you can produce amazing work in the city, you can produce it anywhere. You know, I, I definitely love Chicago, so I'm on the same uh, page as you guys with that. We've got another video question here, a very special video question, and appropriate that it's at the end of the night. Let's see if we can bring them up. Let's see if we can bring them up. There you go. Say good night. Hey. hey. Good night. Say, we love That's you. my sister and That's my, my two nieces. That's my two nieces. <laughs> Katie, say hi. Hey, you guys, I can hear my hey, echo. You guys, I can hear my echo. <laughs> hey, Katie. Hey, Ellie. Well, they, they don't have headphones. Don't have I think that's why. I know. Hey. We love you guys. I love you too. You can't hear us? Can you hear oh, us? Oh, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you. Very oh, serious. Okay. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, guys. Good night. Gonna drop the call. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. All right. <laughs> Wasn't that special? That was nice. Oh, very oh. cool. I haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much Bud's whole family is in the chat tonight. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Very cool. So, um,. With that, we're, we should wrap it up. That's a bending to it. It's 8.55. Uh, that, that's the end of the night here for us, guys. Thank you, uh, Bud. We have to ask our questions. From Thirst. <laughs> oh, see? I, I told you. I almost did it again. Mm -hmm. I'm an idiot. You're right. Good. That's why, that's why I, I, I prepared you guys. So last part of, last part of the chat tonight, uh, Bud and John are going to ask questions of the audience. So fire away. Uh, cl click them off. And actually, you can answer in the chat room. Or if you think your answer is specific, is you know awesome, you can ask a question by clicking on the red submit a question button, and we'll bring it up in text. So, so fire should, away, should guys, start, go ahead. Should we start with the easy ones or the hard ones? Let's start with the easy ones. The easy ones. Okay. Yeah. First one. W would you rather? This is would you rather? Remember would you rather? This is would you rather? Would you rather, uh, kern or rag the Bible? So would you rather kern the Bible, or would you rather rag the Bible? <laughs> Hopefully everyone what, you know, in the chat. Oh man, we're getting okay. We're getting two kerns, right. two kerns, what and a rag. What these terms mean? Right. Lots uh, of kerning is adjusting oh, oh, the oh, amount of rag is rag is flying. Yep. 
Rag is flying back. Rag up. Rag is adjusting uh, it's where each line breaks on the side of a paragraph. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a lot, a lot for Rag. Rag is winning by far. A lot of rags. The first few were current. That was yeah. really surprising. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Rag can help with readability. Okay, Steve okay. Quinn, well, that was the, the consummate design professor, says Rag can help with readability. Thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Next one. Next one. Cool. Okay, would Second you, question. Would you, yep, would you rather have one horrible client that pays you on time or a million fantastic clients that always pay you late? This is but more you do for get the paid in that scenario. You do, well, you get paid in both scenarios. Oh, man. Late, oh, look at this. Oh, late, man, late, yeah. Late. All right. Late, late, Nobody's late. Here to make money. Yeah. Well, we're, we're not going to let all of your clients know the answer to this because everybody's saying late. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Okay, next and the question. Last, yep, next Would question. you rather Comic Sans or Papyrus? That's right. Ouch. Say it again. There's no answer to that, guys. That's a no-win situation. You have to pick one. Yes, this right. is how this game works. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, You've got a gun to your head, <laughs> and your your client says, "Pick one or the other." Quick move, hotshot. <laughs> That's right. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> oh, comic sans. Comic In a papyrus. world where it's Comic yeah. Sans or Papyrus. Yeah. One lots of people face. are lots of people are going for Comic Sans. Yeah. This is really surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Papyrus Sans. Papyrus. I'm seeing okay. a lot of Papyrus. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is the final question. So the, the question, final. Yeah, the big question. This is the serious one. This is the one you don't really have to answer. Just think about this one. Yeah, okay. you can answer, but if you don't want to, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, should I ask mine first? Yeah, you're just backpedaling already. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. What gets you excited at work? Yeah. And then my question is, what gets you excited after work? Paycheck. Okay, these are that's different. Yeah, yeah. Tacos, Tacos, sleep, beer, and beer. Then. Okay. Yeah. At work. Yeah, see these thinking of work. Wow, they're going by too fast. Learning. Yeah. John Lynch Troop says learning. Design James Gray says heartthrobs. design heartthrobs. <laughs> Thanks, James Gray. Personal projects. Huh. Yeah. Nice. New work. Teaching. Brother. Very good. Papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I don't know. We thought that was an interesting question because mm -hmm. it, it uh, talks about uh, how you define your work environment versus your home life environment and how you define your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and well, and at first, that we find that a lot of the stuff that we do in the office is stuff that we probably think of at home, and vice versa. So yeah. um, that's probably in a nutshell summing up thirst is that we spend a lot of time here in the office pursuing our own curiosities and, uh, and that, likewise yeah when we're out of the office yeah and likewise when we're out of the office so um, it's a great way to be guys great way to be so bravo uh, thank you again for coming on to design chat and sharing your time and knowledge with the design community um, thank you. Also, want to thank Symbolic, of course, uh, for uh, letting us broadcast from their offices. Uh, Symbolic, S M B O L I C dot com. They are a great agency in West Dundee, Illinois. Check them out. On Twitter, they're at Symbolic. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Hoopajoob. I'm Ryan McGovern. Uh, and at Design Chat. Uh, design, you can submit, or you can. Uh, Download this as a podcast, go on iTunes, search for Design Chat, and subscribe. Uh, and definitely check out Thirst uh, and, and uh, moving, moving Design. What was that URL, guys? MovingDesign.com. MovingDesign.com. There you go. And don't forget to register Beautiful. for Seek at NIU. One last shout-out for Seek. Definitely. One last shout-out for Seek. And uh, Steve follow, Quinn follow. corrected me earlier. <laughs> go ahead. You gotta follow. You gotta follow Moving Twitter and watch our website because more Moving Design is gonna have more projects that you guys can get involved in. Absolutely. And we want your involvement Great. and we want your feedback. Mm -hmm. Seekconference.org. Yes. He corrected me. It's dot not dot com dot org. So great. All right, those are all the plugs for the night. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, we will <laughs> Thanks, be back next week. We don't have a guest booked, but we will announce it soon. Look for that announcement uh, on Design Chat. Good night, guys. 
Have a good one. Good and see you soon.